I think I can, I will. Welcome back. Acts 28 And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen, or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds, and said that he was a god. It was sometime around 60 A.D., and the Apostle Paul was en route to Rome from the Isle of Crete. On the journey, a fierce storm blew the ship off course. On the fourteenth night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea, when about midnight, the sailors sensed that they were approaching land. They took soundings and found the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. When daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea. With the storm still raging, the ship struck a sandbar and began to break apart. The nearly 300 men on board swam for their lives. Miraculously, everyone survived. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. And so began a Christian influence in Malta that has continued down through the centuries. Today, Malta is Europe's most religious nation. 98% of its citizens are Catholic. St. Paul is memorialized across the island, nowhere more than in St. Paul's Bay, where tourists come to visit the shipwrecked cathedral and see the spot where most believe Paul's ship ran aground nearly 2,000 years ago. But when former Los Angeles crime scene investigator Bob Cornu paid a visit to Malta, facts in the biblical narrative didn't fit with the view from St. Paul's Bay. That difference led to a 10-year search for the true location of Paul's shipwreck. Bob started in the pages of his Bible. The crux of the story revolved around the four anchors. Could they be found? And I looked at the Bible and said, could I solve this like it was a crime? Could I take the evidence that exists on the pages of the Bible and actually find these lost anchors that the Bible talks about? Acts 27 and 28 gives a very detailed account, so Bob listed four factors that would have to match up in order to find the true location. A bay with a beach, a reef with a sandbar where two seas meet, the seabed at about 90 feet of depth, and a place the sailors would not have recognized. Cornuke enlisted the help of a group of men who know the waters around Malta best, the Maltese fishermen. So what I did is I started my search by going out with these fishermen that knew the weather, knew the currents, knew the topography of the ocean. They took me out with them and they explained to me all the possible places based on what the Bible narrative says to where the shipwreck of Paul could have been. Most of Malta is surrounded by cliffs, so Bob quickly narrowed down the possibilities to a few bays with beaches. To figure out which site was most plausible, Cornuke looked to Dr. Graham Hutt an expert on Mediterranean storms. I've been studying the storms and the weather patterns in the Mediterranean over the past 30 years. 
um, and uh, it resulted in a book on North Africa and Malta, which covers all these uh, issues with the weather. Dr. Hutt's expertise helped make sense of the clues in Axe. They were really scared of getting dragged down into the Bay of Certity, uh, down on the Libyan coast. So they would have been trying as much as they could to head in a northerly direction, but only actually making northwesterly. The only bay in that area that fits the direction of drift Bob calculated is called the Bay of St. Thomas. In my opinion, bearing in mind where they most probably would have been, St. Thomas's Bay is a much more likely place. We're just coming into St. Thomas Bay on the southeastern side of Malta, and the theory goes that this was the bay that was written about in Acts 27 and 28. Now, part of the biblical account says that the sailors didn't recognize the island and didn't know where they were until the villagers told them that this was Malta. And that is another support for the theory that this was the bay that they landed in because if the sailors had landed on the north side of the island, there were many ports that they should have been familiar with. One day, Bob made an electrifying discovery. It came by way of an old diver with an incredible story. I met a man named Ray Chancho and he said, hey Bob, in the late 60s and early 70s, we dug up four anchors from the ocean bottom at about 90 feet depth. The location, just outside St. Thomas Bay, near a dangerous sandbar called the Moonshar Reef. The anchors were later donated to the National Maritime Museum. An expert analysis confirmed that they were from the Roman era, but the divers had no idea what they had at the time. We found the anchors uh, at the end of the 60s, beginning of the 70s. I wouldn't remember the exact year, you know. Mm -hmm. As I say, it was of no importance to me whatsoever when we found them. It was yippee, we found a piece of lead. Ray agreed to show us the area where the anchors were found. Coming out to the head of Muntar Reef. We're going to dive down and see if we can find the site where the anchors were brought up. So when I went out and looked at the location where they found these anchors, I looked at the shoreline and it fit with what the Bible said. There was a bay with a beach. There was a reef where two seas come together. Today, the seafloor is again tranquil and calm, giving no clues to the secrets that lie beneath the waves. It's impossible to know for sure if this is the spot where Paul's shipwreck occurred, but many Maltese are intrigued by the theory. Joe Navarro is another of the divers who helped retrieve the anchors. I myself am convinced that it is more plausible that the shipwreck was on Munchar, not on St. Paul's Island. We have believed St. Paul's Island, but nobody ever sort of questioned, but are you sure? We looked down at this glistening anchor, and I remember kneeling down and putting my hand on that cold object and thinking that I could be now touching history. For 2,000 years it belonged to the sea, and now I was actually touching this object that could come to us from the pages of the Bible. Today, the anchors are tucked away in a corner of Valletta's Maritime Museum. Most visitors pass them by, having no idea what history they might hold. Chuck Holton, CBN News, on the Mediterranean Isle of Malta.